Hello guys, welcome back to Paper Whisper. Today, I'll be showing you an origami, the first part of my origami for absolute beginners tutorial. So, the first part of this tutorial will be what paper to use and how to prepare it. Of course, I will not be including double tissue because for absolute beginners, I would not highly un not recommend double tissue. It's hard to, it's not easy to make, and it's usually for complicated models. I'd save it for that. So, I will just that preview. I will not be going through that. But basically, I'll be going through what type of paper you should use for what double-sided, duo-colored, single-sided, um, double-colored, well, not that's not really a thing. And then there's um, wet folding, dry folding, tessellation, there are type of work on, there's a lot we're going through in this video, but it's pretty simple. Hopefully you enjoy it, and let's get started. So, first things first, um, double-sided paper. It's like this sheet of fruit paper I have right here. It's yellow, you can't tell. It's the exact same color on both sides. That's double-sided. Then, there might be something you might call duo-colored. I actually don't have anything like that right now. But let's say I had this sheet of curling paper that I ripped off from my, this sheet square. Let's say this had, um, let's say this had this color, a gray color on this side. If this was gray and this was yellow and, and neither side was white, then it would be counted as duo-colored. Which basically means that it's two unique colors on both sides. And finally, there's Kami, or also known as single-sided origami paper. Where it's white on one side and color on the other. And yes, white colored paper, depend depending on the thickness, can be either double-sided or Kami. Thinner and smaller, usually. So, now, there's also um, two different techniques you can use in origami. There's wet folding and dry folding, and how much you have to prepare each of them. Well, for dry folding, is exactly what it sounds like. It's exactly what it sounds like. You use normal paper. But for wet folding, you use something kind of like a sheet I have right here, actually. It is a sheet, a 70 by 70 centimeter sheet. By the way, it's folded into mold in half multiple times, so I'm not going to be able to show the full sheet on camera because it's so big and I don't have space on my desk. But basically, this is a sheet of, actually two sheets of Kinumami 70 by 70 centimeters, or rhinoceros hide. It's not actually, I know, I know it's not a great name. It's just normal paper, just very thick paper. Just to show you how thick it is, just look at it. If this is double-sided or on paper that is black, as you probably can tell, it's really good paper. And for um, like designs, like if you're shaping or some, if you need to shape something, I'll make a tutorial on a rhinoceros soon, actually. But basically, with this paper, ironically, <clears throat> which is actually I think you're gonna find pretty cool. And I'll also be making a tutorial on this Kusadama. Oops, sorry, never mind, actually. Never mind about that part. But basically, um, I changed my mind about that, sorry. But basically, this paper is 110, I guess, GSM, or grams per square meter, which basically means that if I had a meter of this, one meter by one meter, or 100 centimeters, or 100 centimeters, or approximately 40 by 40 inches, then it would be weigh 110 grams, or a roughly maybe a quarter pound, I think a bit less than a quarter pound, so a quarter of a pound. So that means maybe four, 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 three and th three quarter ounces approximately. You get the point, right? Okay. So basically, finally, and basically, how to prepare it? Wet folding paper, which is usually over 100 GSM, is usually a lot harder to prepare. I mean, it's well worth it in my opinion. But basically, what you have to do is you have to take a spray bottle or a wet damp cloth, and you spray the paper or wet the paper on both sides and that makes the paper it's cool because it helps the paper stay completely in shape which i've always found magnificent and fascinating so that's really it for the papers and finally i'll be showing you different types of origami there are modulars which are usually 3d like kusadamas they usually take multiple they take multiple pieces to put together then there are box pleated models which are models that come from a grid like this. Heart heart made for September 11th. Then let's see what else do I have. There are um there's non there I don't remember what they're called. I think it's called blisters. That doesn't seem right. There's some models that are embossed pleated. I'm just gonna call it that for now. And they are made from uh, as you probably can tell this is a lion. I tried to, I said to attempt to design it. it. Is um made out of uh, um a 18 by 18 inch sheet of craft paper. 
craft paper, sorry, um, and it, um, and it is, um, it is, um, about, I don't know, maybe, I don't know the size, but you get the point, it's, um, made out, not out of a grid, but out of a normal, not normal, but it's out of a, out of a more complicated way, which I don't remember how I made it, so I won't be making a tutorial on this, I just, I think it's cool, it's one of my models, and finally, I'll be, um, telling you about, um, two other things, actually, there is something called a tessellation, if you haven't heard of it, it's, it's like the hydrogen tiles box, it's, um, except, it's, except without the box part, you, have you heard of the hydrogen tiles by the of Fujimoto? They are basically a bunch of hydrangeas on one sheet of paper. Basically, anything that's, that has multiple of the same thing repeated on one sheet of paper is usually called a tessellation. That's my definition of it. I could be wrong. But basically, um, yeah, that's really all I can think of right now. But, um, if you have any ideas of other things to talk about, for, um, if you have any other ideas for the, um, for, for, um, types of origami, you can put them down in the comments happily. Oh, I know what I was going to say origami action models for example this um this uh what's it called this um daxi which is coming out in a live stream tomorrow that boomerangs pretty cool right so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and i'll have a, the, the talk through and there will be a part two coming out hopefully next um wednesday or so sometime next week so stay tuned for another episode of paper is for origami Introduction.